let's get the camera out and give it a bit of a wiggle. So yeah, that is it now. <laughs> hello, hello and welcome. Um, a few weeks ago, I uh, put a video uh, out asking people to, uh, if, or rather, if they had any questions that they would like to ask me, um, and I would do my uh, very best uh, to do so. Um, I think I only actually got four questions, um, which was surprising and a little bit disappointing. But um, anyway, so I thought I would address those questions with you today. Um, I'll just run through them with you in a minute. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully um, I'll be able to answer them the best I can. Um, with us being in uh, lockdown in the UK at the moment, um, we can't get out to um, create images. So, um, you know, we, we've uh, got to sort of entertain ourselves other ways. And one of those ways is I have been going through um, my archives over the last three years of images that I've saved, um, which um, runs into actually thousands. Um, and I've sort of been seeing if I've missed anything, uh, if there's any potential in, in uh, the images that I um, dismissed at the time. Um, which I think is a good idea um, that, or is it, it's, um, it's a good thing never to delete your images because if you look at them uh, maybe a year down the road, um, you look at them in a different light. Um, maybe um, there's your sort of... Um, way of editing them has changed or you found different sort of editing software um, that you can use to sort of um, make the images that you dismissed into a decent image. So um, yeah, that, that's a, um, something worth bearing in mind is never delete um, images um, because you never know when you want to go back to them and um, uh, hopefully make a, a, a good final image from them. Um, and I have actually made two or three images uh, from Dismiss Ones um, that uh, I'm quite happy with. So yeah, but anyway, we'll get into now the questions um, and uh, I will do my very best to answer them for you. First of all, I there's a couple of names here which I know I am going to pronounce wrong. Um, so I do sincerely apologise for that. Um, just put it down to my sheer ignorance. <laughs> so yeah, I, I do apologise. Okay, the first question I got was from Frank Stiberski. I am so sorry if I've got your name wrong. Um, <laughs> I do apologise. But he says, um, can you do a video about ICM at home? Um, I don't really do any ICM at home. Um, I did take some pictures um, of some geese and some uh, goats the other day, um, which is um, at a neighbour of mine. Um, but that's about as near as I've got to actually uh, taking ICM at home. Um, which I'll probably do a video on um, those uh, goats and uh, geese at some time. Um, one from Jason uh, Greensides. Other than Chris Friel, which other photographers influence you? 
be great if you could show a specific example from one of their images. Do you know what? I haven't really found any photographer that inspires me as much as Chris Friel. Um, I do love um, Valda Bailey's work um, and the other one is Doug Chinnery. Uh, his is uh, some beautiful images as well. But I do think that Chris Friel is probably my main inspiration. Um, but I'm always on the lookout for other photographers to see their work. Um, so yeah, I think that probably answers that. Um, dear, I am really, really going to get this wrong. Um, a question from Stuart. I am so sorry. I really, really do not know how to pronounce that name. Um, but he asks, Hi John, I would like to ask what part of your work on the image is done by post-processing? Have you ever tried to combine ICM with multiple exposure? Yes, I, I have tried it with very little success to be fair. Um, I don't think I've ever um, actually ended up with an image that I have been happy with uh, doing multiple exposure in camera. I do do multiple exposure, I do do layers uh, in post-processing, which I'll go through with you. But as far as it in camera, no, I haven't really, um, uh, have much success with that. Um, a lot of the modern cameras um, have got much many more options within the camera themselves um, uh, for multiple exposures, especially Canon. I know you can sort of overlap images uh, taken sort of previously and also they have a, a dark and light setting my Nikon uh, D4, um, although it can take up to nine um, images overlapping, it doesn't have the options for sort of dark and light, and you can't sort of combine them in images that you've already taken. So if you do do multiple exposure, you have to take sort of, you know, um, if you're taking three images, you have to sort of take it one, two, three. You can't sort of go back and combine it with an image you took a day ago, whereas some cameras you can, I think, in the modern cameras. So no, it hasn't been something that I have really been that successful with. Carol Wilcox asked, Hi John, maybe not a question to ask you, but on post-processing would certainly be of interest. In, or rather, info on post-processing would be of interest. So that seems to be the general question about my post-processing um, and how I sort of do process my images. So I'm going to concentrate a little bit today on my post-processing, which I haven't really made a video about. Um, yeah, so um, we'll pick out a few images and I'll run through with you my process that I use for processing them. Okay, the first thing I will do when I get home after downloading all my images of the day is I will go through them all and I will pick out ones that I think have got potential. Um, these were taken at Christchurch Harbour um, and if I find something that I think could make for a good final image, I will mark it with a one rating. I will then go through all those I have picked and um, then reduce it down to um, ones that I think definitely have got potential. I mark those with a two rating and lastly I will pick out the ones that I am definitely going to have a go at editing and mark those with a three. Now sometimes there'll be nothing um, and other times 
out of say four or five hundred images that I took I will probably get maybe on a good day two or three um, on a fair day just get one it's usually one that I do pick that I, I think I'm going to go and edit okay so <clears throat> when I see an image that I think has got potential I will have a look at it and sort of think what I would like to do to it to just make it that bit better or a keeper um, I have found in the past that the images that you have to do uh, least to end up being the best images um, I mean in the past quite frequently I have spent a day <clears throat> up to a day on an image um, trying to get it how I like it uh, and at the end of the day I've just deleted it or a little bit of advice is um, don't delete it that day let it or uh, sleep on it have a look at it the following day and you will sort of either say to yourself no that that's not going anywhere it's not got potential or you might have a look at it the following day and say oh actually I quite like that so that's a little bit of advice always sleep on it um, but as I say I found uh, that the best images are the ones you do least to now this image is one in that um, category that I didn't really do much to this is the original NEF file now I must say that I do my editing um, in Nikon's Capture NX2 software um, so if you use Lightroom or Photoshop there's nothing in uh, NX2 that you can't do in Photoshop or Lightroom but uh, I'm afraid um, that my expertise with Lightroom or Photoshop leaves a lot to be desired and I've really um, got to know NX2 really well and I, I love it as an editing software so I do use this so it's probably not going to um, sort of relate to what you use um, but it gives you um, a rough idea uh, of what I do to my images let's just get this up there a little bit um, yeah so th this was an image that I really liked anyway um, but what I did uh, the first thing I, I've actually uh, deconstructed it for you to start again um, the first thing I did was photo effects which actually all I did was enhance dark tones um, which just sort of brought the blacks up a little bit if you like um, the auto retouch brushes which there are quite a lot of um, I'll look at an image especially something like this and if there's something in it that I don't particularly like like maybe for example I don't like these masks sort of being repeated here or or something like that I, I will sort of get rid of them um, so if I just click on all these back in um, you see that I, I, I got rid of a, a, a mask that was repeated there and just bits and bits it basically just cleans the image up a little bit because with ICM you can tend to um, get stuff in there that is sort of repeated because of the movement of the camera and that really was about it for this image and I gave it finally a little crop um, and that was it um, so yeah very oh no sorry I did um, I did slight noise reduction as well um, not a great deal I don't think no it's literally five percent so very very little noise reduction was needed but yeah that that um, that is an image that didn't really need a lot doing to it 
Now this is of a Salisbury Cathedral. Now I actually took about three or four hundred shots of this on the day. And when I got back and went through all the images, there was really nothing that was sort of jumping out at me. They were all sort of pretty much trash uh, until I came to nearly the end. And this one jumped out at me, which I thought had a lot of potential. So I thought I would work on it to see what I could get. I didn't like all these streaky lines in it. Um, and the water, which is actually a stream, um, which is probably about half a mile from the actual cathedral itself. But um, by the camera movement, I pulled the water into the image. Um, now, the first thing I did with this, which I very often do with my images, is in Capture Annex 2, they have what they call a double threshold. Um, I'm sure Lightroom and Photoshop have something very similar. Sometimes it really improves the image and sometimes it absolutely um, annihilates it. But it's always worth a try. And what you do is you click on the double threshold, which, um, just a minute, let me turn this back a minute. You click on the double threshold, which gives you a blank screen. You then move the um, dark slider across until you see black in the image. And then you click on your um, black control point up there and click on that and the same with the highlight slider until you see whites click on your white color control point and click on that and when you unclick it it transforms the image from that to that which is a great great improvement um, and it's definitely heading in the right direction to where I want to be um, so yeah, as I say, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's well worth giving it a go. The next thing I did was just played with the levels and curves, just the um, RGB um, slider um, until I got that, which sort of brightened the image up a little bit. Um, now, color control point, um, I think I'm pretty sure that uh, Photoshop and Lightroom have color control points. Um, yeah, I, I really, I like the image, but th this part here was um, sort of gone into obscurity, if you like. I really wanted to sort of bring this up a little bit more and I managed to do that with um, color control points um, which gave me that which has <clears throat> really sort of made this lower part of the cathedral pop. Um, the beautiful thing about color control points is is if you um, adjust say I, the first things I was doing was I had a control point here and a control point there. These other control points there, there and there um, are neutralizing um, that area from these adjustments here. Um, if you know con color control points, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, now auto retouch brushes. I wanted to get rid of all these lines. Didn't like those at all um, in the water as well. So let's turn those back on. Um, in fact, I'm going to turn all the um, auto retouch brushes on to show you. It was a fair bit of work involved in that to um, get it to that point. But as you can see, it, it's definitely um, cleaned the image up and uh, made it a lot better. Um, tweak the levels and curves again. Just put a slight S curve in there, which, mm, yeah, turn it on and off. Probably didn't do a great deal, but 
yeah just, just sort of darkened it up a little bit made made it pop a little bit more now another color control point here i was using this one to sort of uh make the actual um cathedral uh, spire pop a little bit more and that was actually the final image um, which I was really really pleased with um, took a lot of work especially sort of cleaning it up but uh, well worth it at the end of the day yeah um, oh, something I do forget noise reduction not a lot five percent I usually find that five to ten percent is enough to clean these images up not a great deal but uh, yeah it, it just cleans them up slightly so to see compare it with the original there you go that's before and after which i'm sure you'll accept is a great improvement and it was an image which i was very very pleased with at the end of the day now this image, um, I really, really liked this. Um, I liked the person uh, walking past, but I also liked, uh, or rather, I didn't particularly like the buildings. They weren't particularly great, I didn't think, but I did like also uh, this image. I liked the way the buildings had come out with the intentional camera movement. Uh, just it, it just seemed a better image. But of course, I hadn't got the person in it. So I thought I would um, do layers, and you can't do that in Capture NX2. So I had I actually purchased Photoshop Elements um, basically for using the printing plugin. Um, for my Canon printer but you can do layers in, in Photoshop elements so it was all pretty much new to me so I thought I'd give it a go and I ended up amalgamating those two images ending up with this image so I've now got the nice um, look on the buildings and I've also got the person in the image so pleased with that but I thought this would really look nice as a black and white so I turned it into black and white um, again auto retouch brushes just sort of getting rid of unwanted obstacles um, and these all other three are auto retouch brushes let's just clean the image up a little bit levels and curves I just put a slight S curve in there, which gave me that. Um, color control points, just sort of playing with the sort of areas here. Um, just making it a little bit darker, a little bit more prominent. Same with this color control point on the actual street light, which sort of gave me the look that the light was actually on um, which I, I thought sort of set it off a little bit um, again noise reduction what did I give that I gave that quite a lot actually 30% which is unusual um, but it obviously ended up a little bit grainy so I put that in so yeah that was uh, that was my first attempt basically of doing layers which I was quite pleased with a big learning curve for me but uh, it was on the road to sort of perhaps doing this a little bit more often very often I'll, I'll look at an image and it, it like this one it really is a nothing image um, it's very flat it's not interesting um, but you look at it and you think actually i think that may have potential with quite a bit of work needed to it so i'll sit down and i will play with it um, and i think that's a, um, a lot of what you've got to do if you see an image that you think may have potential 
and you know roughly the direction that you want it to go in um, just sit and play with it you know play with all your different settings your color settings and so on and so forth and to see uh, very often it will lead to nowhere and you will as I said before end up just sort of abandoning it um, but sometimes it works and this was one um, that, that that was really the situation I looked at it and I thought yeah it's it's really a nothing picture um, but let, let, let's have a let's have a little play and see what we can end up with so I like this dark area down here but I didn't like the color of it so I put in um, some color control oh, just a minute I've got to um, I've deconstructed it that's it that's full size um, yeah so I put in the uh, couple of color control points um, in there and tweak them which gave me that and I, I really sort of liked the way that was going um, I, I liked the red um, color next thing I did was I played with the color balance the contrast the reds the greens the blues um, just sort of sat and played with them to see what sort of um, adjustments um, the adjustments created and ended up with that which is really sort of making the image come alive now if you like it, it's gone from a very flat image to something that that is you know quite pleasing to the eye um, played again with the uh, another setting of color balance played with the uh, blues there which has given me a more it's gone from a sort of pinky color or reddy color to a, a sort of more a, a pleasing yellowy color um, auto retouch brushes again just cleaning the image up a little bit I'm just gonna um, click on those uh, noise reduction uh, again 5% very little um, another color control point down here just tweaking it um, which has just basically darkened this edge off here if you have a look I didn't like the way that this black part here didn't continue down so by doing that it, it sort of continued so that was kind of and I ended up giving it a small crop um, so yeah um, basically it has gone from that to that and I think you'll agree that um, uh, it, it was well worth the the sort of effort um, to to do that um, so yeah it just goes to show you that if you have an image which you know you really don't think is um, that great but you think it's got potential just play with it and see where you end up and you might end up with an image you like before I go on to um, the new way that I'm sort of editing my images, which I'll come to in a minute, um, I'll make this the last one of this sort of a group, if you like. Now, this was Stonehenge. It was taken um, while we were on, uh, no, well, actually, we weren't on lockdown, but um, hang, um Stonehenge was actually closed to the public but there is a public footpath which runs by the side of it I actually did a, a video on it but I really really like this image the way it turned out um, but in itself it, it really wasn't that sort of particularly great and I thought it would really look nice uh, more black and white um, which is what I did I didn't I thought this foreground was not particularly great um, so I actually um, played with the levels and curves um, just on the lower half of the image 
um, which sort of made it look um, so great basically I bought the um, sort of um, highlights I really pushed them let's have a look as you can see I've really pushed the highlights over to the left which has sort of made it look like snow or I thought it, it looked like snow so I, I like the way that was sort of going um, and that was basically it uh, auto retouch brush just got rid of a, a bit of unwanted uh, noise reduction again only five percent and eventually I just did a crop which uh, sort of I thought that that sort of crop um, uh, suited the particular image so yeah that that was um, it so again from uh, compare images from that to that and uh, <clears throat> I thought that really really worked well now, uh, just lately, uh, I have been using an editing software called iColorama, um, which I found out from Chris Friel. He uses all the time. Um, and this is actually done, um, it's an Apple iPad, so it can only be done on a, um, an iPad. And I'm absolutely loving it's it's allowed me to sort of take my photography to another level really unfortunately i can't sit and show you uh what i've done to each particular image um two reasons um one is because um un unlike ordinary editing software you can't go back into it and show the adjustments you've made um and the other thing is that very often I will put there are so many different sort of settings in iColorama and I just put an image into it um, and I will um, play with the different settings and see what sort of effect it gives me. Um, and sometimes there's nothing and other times um, it, it will really sort of uh, jump out at you that it it's a, uh, makes for a nice image um, but if you ask me to go sometimes back into it and do that image again the same way I, I would probably struggle um, usually I will write down each stage that I do um, in iColorama so I can actually go back into it and um, a sort of um, recreate that final image so it, it's something that I'm not going to be able to um, sort of run through with you um, but if you like uh, sort of this style of photography um, or this style of editing your images um, I highly recommend that you get this iColorama and just put an image into it and just play with all the different settings and it, you'll be amazed that the different um, sort of uh, uh, final um, image that it can give you it, it's a good it's a great lot of fun and uh, you can get some wonderful results from it so yeah that's uh, that's the way my um, editing has he headed um, very often once I've sort of done an image in iColor Armor I'll then put it back into um, uh, Capture NX2 and sort of just tweak it in there as well um, so yeah I, I'm absolutely loving using that and I highly recommend uh, you get it if if that's the sort of imagery that you are after um, as I'm sort of showing here a few results um, that have been done in iColorama so yeah that's about it I hope this has sort of answered some of your questions um, I've enjoyed sort of showing you um, if you have any more questions um, please let me know and I will try and answer those as well. Um, so yeah, um, until we can get out shooting again and uh, make some more images and some videos, this is John Dexter saying thanks very much for watching and bye for now.